I'm gonna show you why you should buy this Pika Drive pencil over this, or this, or this whole wall of tools behind me. In fact, I'm gonna show you six tools that I think you should buy over these. And I'm gonna do all that while I build this little music box for my son. Let's do it. So the first time I saw a fast cap tape measure was when I was watching a video by Jason Hibbs over at Bourbon Mall. And it just so happened to come when I was really tired of my old Stanley tape measure. Like a good little lad, I clicked on the affiliate link in the video description and was blown away by the price. How could a tape measure that costs less than $10 be any good? But I figured if the drunken moth himself was using it, it must be a decent tape measure. At the very least, it was worth the price of admission to find out. Worst case scenario, I can make another video bashing it with a sweet thumbnail and title, something like, Jason Hibbs is lying to you. Fortunately for you, that video never got made because Jeepers, I love this tape measure. Yeah, Jeepers. For eight bucks, you get a tape measure that is reliable to the 16th of an inch. You can read it from either the right or the left. The whole thing is covered in this rubber boot that makes it super durable and it's got a pencil sharpener. Not that you need it, because the next tool makes a traditional pencil obsolete. Now I'd guess if you made it this far in the video, you're probably wondering how an overpriced mechanical pencil is a more necessary purchase than all those other tools. Well, let me answer your question with another question. What do you reach for in 90%, if not all, of your projects? Is it a jigsaw, a palm router? Don't even try to say it's a hand plane. Nope, the correct answer is a pencil. Now another question, that pencil you use so much, how often is it nowhere to be found? I'll give you a second. All right, if you said, never, I always have my pencil right where I need it. One of two things are happening. One, you're lying, or you have a Jonathan Katzmosis apron. And I say, good for you, you win a prize. The prize is, you get to watch me ramble on for another 10 minutes about tools. You're welcome. Now, for those of you that enjoy telling the truth or are not fortunate enough to own the apron made by the man with the best hair in woodworking, get yourself a Pika pencil. It may seem like you're paying a lot for a pencil, but it will be the last pencil you ever need to buy, ever. The number one feature that makes the Pika so great is the holster it comes in. It makes it super easy to keep the pencil on you when you need it. Plus, you get to feel like a cowboy straight out of a 1950s movie every time you draw it out. Another thing I really like about it is the thickness of the lead. One problem I had with traditional mechanical pencils like these is how easy the lead breaks when you're tracing something. That's not a problem with the Pika Dry's 2.8 millimeter thick lead. And when the lead gets dull, you can easily sharpen it back up with the sharpener built right in the holster. Anyways, point is, buy a Pika pencil and never worry about where your pencil is again. Tool number three, the Wixie Digital Angle Gauge. Now. Unlike the Pika pencil, you will not use this on every project. But man, when you need to set a tool to a specific angle, it's almost a must. I'm gonna be honest with you. Most woodworking is done at two angles, 90 degrees and 45 degrees. And it just so happens you can do 45 and 90 with one of these. So a question for you to ask me would be, why do you need this doohickey if your combination square will do both those angles? Well, that's a great question. And the truth is, you don't. You don't need one of these. You can absolutely set your tool to 90 degrees and 45 degrees with one of these. But, as a lot of woodworkers have shown on YouTube, one of the secrets to getting a perfect mitered box is to cut your miters slightly under 45 degrees. Enter in the Wixie Digital Angle Gauge. It lets you dial in any angle to the 10th of a degree. And it does this relative to an adjacent plane. So it doesn't matter if your tool isn't perfectly level. 
Now let me give you an instance where using this for 90 degrees makes sense. Say I'm gonna set my table saw up to 90 degrees. It can be kind of a pain to hold the square to the blade while you're reaching over to make the adjustment on the table saw. It's much easier just to set the wick seat on the blade and make the adjustment from a comfortable position. This is also really nice when setting up a jointer. So yeah, you may not use it on every project, but you're gonna be really happy you have it when you need it. So sidetrack, there was one group of tools I used a lot in making this project, and well, I can't recommend everybody get one, but if you were ever on the fence about buying a 3D printer, just do it. They have worked their way into my heart and continue to help me grow my creativity. They allow me to make things that either wood just won't allow, or wood won't allow me in the amount of time I have to spare in the shop. If you need more convincing, I suggest you watch my video where I go into using a 3D printer in a wood shop. But enough about 3D printers for now, let's move on to tool number four. I have a confession to make. I know I just rambled on about how you should be using a digital angle gauge to set up your tools, and that is true. But I usually rely on a square to tell me something is truly 90 degrees. And not just any square, a machinist square. I happen to have the Graz six inch machinist square and I love it. I've been using it for years. And machinist squares are just what they sound like. They are a square machinists use to set up machines. So the machine that cut this square probably lined up with this square. Wow, kind of like a chicken and egg thing. Crazy. Anyways, what was I saying? All right, um, yeah, machinist squares and why you need one. Simply put, they are built to be reliable. You'll notice this thing doesn't have any fancy markings on it for measurements. It's not adjustable. It doesn't convert to 45 degrees. But you know what it does do? Tell you if something is square. And that's all I need it to do. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't get one of those red shiny little squares that has all the little holes in it for you to put your less than desirable mechanical pencil in and make little markings. All I'm saying is that you should get one of these to make sure that thing is still true to square. And honestly, I would recommend you get multiple sizes because I only have the six inch and sometimes it can be a bit of a pain to try to get it in the corners of boxes, especially really small ones. Um, actually, I'm gonna take my own advice and uh, go order a three-piece set. I'll be right back. All right, imagine this. You have all of your pieces cut and laid out, ready to be glued up. So you just grab your go-to glue and start squirting it all on there, right? Wrong. You need to be using the Rockler glue applicator kit, tool number five. Now I know what you're saying. I've been doing this for 30 years and I don't need a blah, 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 blah. Just because you've been doing something for a really long time doesn't mean you're doing it right or there isn't a way to do it a little bit better. Now look, of course you can grab this, pop it open and squeeze your glue out. In a pinch, that'll be just fine. But if you truly want to get more efficient at your woodworking, I believe the Rockler kit for 25 bucks is great. I did a video a while back about a bunch of glue up tools and I was blown away by this kit. I suggest if you want to know more about it, consider checking out that video. But to sum it up, this is a solid kit that helps in multiple types of glue ups. Look, I love a good squeeze out. I do. But you know who doesn't? Sanders, planes, stains, that poor person that has to see the corner where Rubio didn't penetrate because you didn't get all the glue out. The messier your glue up is, the longer you're gonna spend cleaning it up for good results. And that means less time in the shop doing things that you actually enjoy doing. So do everyone a favor and consider picking up this kit. 
Tool number six, the Chrome Vanidium Drill Bit Set by Fish. Okay, so if you've been following the channel for a while, you know I love these drill bits. You'd also know that I've mentioned them in two other videos before this one. So why a third video, you ask? Because I know not all of you have bought a set. I'm making it my sole purpose in life to make sure that every woodworker has one of these sets. They really are that great. I have the Imperial set, but they do make a metric set for the rest of the world out there. Now I know one holdup for people is probably the price. Help me, I'm poor. But let me ask you one question. Is this a YouTube video or a test? <laughs> There's been a lot of questions in the video. All right, but last one. How much would you be willing to pay to make sure that your project wasn't ruined at like the 80% mark? I would venture to guess it's more than what this kit cost. And I'm telling you, if you use them right, they will give you great results over and over and over. I really wish I had them back when I built my son's bed. At the last minute, I decided I wanted to add dowels and wouldn't you know it, the inferior drill bits I had at the time ended up ripping chunks of wood out and leaving it scarred for life. That's actually when I decided that there must be something better out there than what I was using. And that's when I found these and uh, I've never looked back. So do yourself a favor and before that happens to you, just pick this set up and start using it. All right, look, I know I said I was only gonna talk about six tools, but there's actually one more tool that you should get and it's actually 100% free. The last tool that you should get is actually a subscription to my channel I suppose you think that was terribly clever. But look, if you're not convinced yet, maybe consider watching another one of my videos. Like this one. Bye!